the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilman Alvarez? Here. Councilman Cullen? Here. Councilwoman Eckhart? Here. Councilwoman Hudak? It's absent. Supervisor Head? Here. Ms. Hudak apologizes for her absence this evening. Her son is being recognized and uh, she was going to try to make it, but uh, I don't think this meeting is going to take as long as it might take for her to get here. So I told her to enjoy her family night and uh, we'll hold down the fort for tonight. Exit in the front and the rear. If you have any electronic device, please put it on vibrate. I make a motion to open the public hearing. The first one is to amend the chapter 138 zoning regarding digital submissions. Second. I, okay, I waive the reading of the notice. Is ready? Mm -hmm. Public, on comment on digital submissions. What this is, ladies and gentlemen, is when developers come in, we have a lot of paperwork going back for decades and decades, and as you know, the computers became much more prevalent in the last 10, 15 years, and all the documentation, all the mapping and everything be required to be put on uh, digital submission, and this way people from home can get access to it through our webpage. That's the biggest reason for that. Any comment? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. And before I close it, let me say, we're gonna, I'm gonna suggest in the future our policy be um, to extend the public hearings in case a person couldn't make it. Um, I had said 10 days, I had more time to think about it today because if we're gonna be voting on this at the next meeting, I'd rather have it to be open for seven days. So basically the policy will be from now on, at least, well, at least while I'm here, I'm gonna hopefully, and everyone will agree, We'll extend the written period of seven days. This way here, if we get the information in, we have a chance to review it. If we extend it by 10 days, we won't have the time to review it. And I want to give more. So it's kind of a compromise between the public's comment and us having time to review that comment before we make a decision. So the uh, period I'm going to ask for is the public comment written period to be extended from seven days from today. Okay. Um, I would just say some of the bigger um, issues and developments and all that really deserve a longer comment period. But in general, when there's no comment at meetings, I certainly don't have an objection to seven days. And what would you think if it was bigger? What, what time are you looking at? Um, well, we usually always do 10 well, for so that. So three days. Well. But, I mean, sometimes I think we've even done two weeks. I mean, I think it can be, I don't think it has to be a hard and fast rule on anything. Well, the, the thing is, don't forget, we need time to, you know, read the documentation, and if it's 10 days, it's uh, the weekends and whatever, we don't have enough time to really review the comments and give it justice that the people put into it. So the comp compromise, I would think, so we can review it. I mean, I don't want them to write, some people write a book, and by the time you have a time to read it and digest it, you're really not giving it its due consideration. Okay, so round one tonight is seven days? Well, I'll still, I, I put in my two cents. But okay, I, I've two cents, that was more like five well, okay. or six. As, uh, as I, don't, I don't see anybody <clears throat> okay. talking about this. Right? Well, all in favor? Aye. 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 Number two is amend chapter 138 zoning to implement recommendations of the comprehensive plan. What that is, ladies and gentlemen, there were some quick fixes the town board chose to do. We have some uh, parcels out on Route 6 warehouses. They've been empty for a long, long time. There was no uh, outside storage in the, basically the rules and regulations of the town. Nothing like having a warehouse and you can't park a truck overnight. So we made a quick fix and the comprehensive plan will be coming forward in stages. And this will be one of the first stages to make these changes and every stage will have a public hearing. Ashley, you wanna make any comment to that? So the, the first Why don't you just identify yourself for the public? Um, Ashley Lai, town planning consultant. Uh, so the first item that the town board adopted a couple months ago was the outside storage regulations. Those have been implemented. This is the second and more comprehensive um, zoning recommendations that covers quite a number of issues that were recommendations in the comprehensive plan. Um, I can go through those items. I think that would be helpful yeah. for the yes. public. Um, so the, the first section, um, well, there's, is a legislative intent that describes the reasoning behind it. 
The second section is the properties that would be affected. And this local law would uh, affect basically all commercial zoning districts within the town. One of the recommendations of the comprehensive plan was to merge some of the zoning districts that were uh, very similar, um, such as merging um, OP1 and OP2 into a single zone that would just be OP, and OP3 would be changed to OPMU, which is OP mixed use, because OP3 as it stands today allows for some attached, um, attached dwelling units. Uh, it also proposes a new special route six district, which would replace the GC2 district that's along route six between the village of Brewster and the city of Danbury. There's a small section of GC2 on route six on the other side of the village, and that would be incorporated into the GC1 district, which would now be called just plain GC. Uh, so I can point you to the section of the comprehensive plan that had those recommendations, and that was figure 5-5, future zoning, as well as table 5-3, proposed zoning districts and uses. And what was the dates that we did that? Wasn't it in August? That was in August, August 21st, 2014, is when the town board adopted the comprehensive plan. Um, and there was a public hearing prior to that as well, right? And there was a public hearing prior to, to that as well. There were, there were two public hearings. First, there was the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee that prepared the initial draft of the Comprehensive Plan, and they had their own public hearing. They then made a formal recommendation to the town board on that Comprehensive Plan, and when the town board received it, they made their own additional changes as well as held their own public hearing. So the, the Comprehensive Plan that was adopted um, re reflects the changes that were made by the town board as well as uh, public comments that were made during the town board's public comment period. So, and all of the drafts of the comprehensive plan were online throughout the entire process. So, Ashley, for example, this now <clears throat> automobile dealerships is part of this, what yes. we're talking about, yes. so people understand. Out on, and that would be out on Route 6 going to Danbury, correct? That's correct. So I can continue going through the other. Now what still has to come, of course, eventually will be the outside storage to be expanded somewhat. That is also included in here. Is that in this yes. one now? Okay. So um, the next section is amendments to Article I um, definitions that add several new definitions to the code, including a craft workshop, uh, it clarifies office uses to allow call centers. Um, it adds motor vehicle dealership and recreation small scale, as well as theater and performing arts. So those were all uses that were discussed during the comprehensive plan. The section four would amend article two, establishments of districts, the map. So that's as I discussed before, it would be the combining of the various zoning districts. Um, uh, amendments to section or article five non-residential districts that would be the overhaul of the commercial zoning schedule uh, which would combine the various districts as well as add the new districts and um, it also makes a number of changes from uses that are currently special permit uses would now be conditional use permit uses, not, all, and not in all cases, but for some of the more, um, the, the less, the, the uses that have the less potential for an impact have been, some of them have been changed from a special permit use to a conditional use. Uh, that would allow an applicant to go to one less board during the, the planning and zoning process. And Ashley, is um, the ridge line con uh, contained in this as well? The bridge line is not contained in this. Okay. But it can be added if the board would like it to be added. Section six, uh, amendments to article nine, site plan review and approval. Um, it amends the application procedures in section 138-41 to refer to section 138-71, which is a a section that already the planning board is allowed to amend, but it just that was more of a clerical change. Um, 
section 138-46.L outside storage. This adds some additional performance criteria to outside storage and does allow, subject to a conditional use permit from the planning board, the percent of lot area dedicated to outside storage may be expanded for the following uses. And there's a table that's provided and it allows, it would allow um, general business to expand their outside storage to 25% of lot area, landscape, nursery, and commercial greenhouses to 75% of lot area, light manufacturing to 25% of lot area, and off-site new vehicle storage for automobile dealerships to 50% of lot area. Um, so all of these are certainly up for discussion and recommendations from the town board as well as the public. Uh, section 7 is amendments to Article 10, Special Permits and Conditional use, Uses. This is where we would add the new Special Route 6 area district. Uh, it's very similar to the Special Route 22 district that was adopted by the Town Board in 2006. And it has uh, specific design criteria for that district. All uses in that district would either be a conditional use permit or a special permit. So they would have to meet these performance criteria to be able to be built out. And that was mostly because most of these lots are pre-existing, non-conforming, and we're trying to make them... Right, usable. so what, one of the things that the town had done with, with Route 22 is that they did not establish any specific dimensional requirements for that zoning district other than FAR, so that the town board and the planning board had the flexibility to properly orient the building on the site um, based on the site conditions and, and what the use was. So in this case, um, there are specific dimensional requirements. However, the planning board would be permitted to waive those requirements or modify them by up to 25%. And a parcel, which has already been through the zoning process, which is state line, if a parcel was sits out there similar to that, they would have to conform basically to most of the today's regulations. Right, um, so state line, uh, I only brought would still up. comply to this. Yes, I'm, but I'm, what I'm trying to say yeah. is there's many smaller parcels out there, one and a half acre, two acre. Right. You know, if a person has a much larger track of land, they don't need the they SR don't need the six. They don't need the 25% waiver. So that's right. why it was formulated this way, is instead of allowing a blanket, no dimensional requirements, um, we wanted the flexibility there for the smaller parcels that may have more trouble complying with zoning than with the larger parcels that shouldn't have trouble complying with the zoning. Okay. Um, there are requirements for pedestrian environment, um, building design, building facade materials. So all very similar to what is in the, the Special Route 22 district. Um, the next section is adding a section 138-63.9, which is motor vehicle dealerships. So this would be adding motor vehicle dealerships as a special permit use, and it provides special permit conditions that would be applicable to all new motor vehicle service stations or dealerships, as well as um, any existing motor vehicle dealership that wants to make improvements to their site would be required to meet these conditions to the greatest extent practicable. And the reason it's written that way is there are some dimensional requirements that are proposed as part of the special permit conditions. And in some cases, those existing lots may be too small as they stand today to make the, re the necessary visual and, and other improvements. Not to mention names, but something similar to Brady Standard, Smith Carnes, Bruce DeFord. Right. To mention a few, if not all. Right. So I can just quickly say where motor vehicle dealerships are proposed to be allowed as a special permit use is NB, which is where all of the existing dealerships are today. And SR6. And that would that that would be it for the time. Thank you. Are you ready for public comment? Or you got more? Nope, and there's some more. Okay. Um, <laughs> could I ask just, um, is there anything in there? Um, there is it right now on senior housing or rental units? There's nothing in this on senior oh. housing or rental units. Okay. Um, actually, let me just double check. 
but I think senior housing is an existing use yes in in one of the zoning districts and that was not changed, changed. so it's it's allowed and it, it, and it was discussed yes yes it was yes so it's in there as in HC as a conditional use okay. uh, but there's no new like there's no new conditions proposed for right and housing. at the comprehensive plan meetings we did not discuss rental units to that's, the best of that's my that's correct Correct. Uh, it's in there uh, in GC as well, conditional uses. There was a discussion during the comprehensive plan that, that people wanted senior housing to be located closer to facilities. Right. So that was a discussion right. that came up. Right. Um, the next section, section eight, amend amendments to article 11, off street parking and zoning. Um, the proposal here is to reduce the uh, minimum lot si or parking space size from nine and a half feet wide to nine feet wide and then to eliminate the current allowance of uh, allowing 20 percent of your parking to be allowed for small vehicles uh, which i believe was somewhere around an eight foot wide parking space so instead of having nine and a half foot wide parking spaces and eight foot wide just allowing everybody to have a nine foot wide which is pretty standard today Um, and okay. Ashley, that would comply with the new facility that was approved? Mm -hmm. That new facility, there were special permit conditions that were adopted specific right. for commercial or for, um, for commercial parking lots. Right. And those special permit criteria would still apply to that particular use. It would supersede this. This would be for right. every other use in right. the town. Okay. Um, the next section is article amendments to article um, 17 outdoor lighting and one of the things that the planning board has noticed and that was also in the comprehensive plan is that there are no uh, real caps on outdoor lighting and the, the uh, in terms of foot candles mm -hmm. so this section um, promotes a greater compliance with the dark sky um, regulations as well as puts a cap on on the maximum foot candles so that is the that is the overview uh, what you have what I passed out this evening for the town board is a draft EAF um, so you can take that home with you and, and get back to me with any comments or questions that you may have on that before it gets finalized um, actually I didn't get that I'll let you look at it now. Oh, you get them up. There should be in it. There's an extra. There might be one down. Yeah, I can make oh, that's Well, that would be it for Liz. I can make copies for Liz. Okay. So, okay. You know, Ashley, do you want this back, ma'am? That's okay. I, oh, okay. I have it digitally. You have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Public comment at this time, please. Samantha Jacob, Shore Drive. So I'm curious because I've been hearing some things about that there's going to be certain parcels of land changed to highway commercial. Can you just bring that up a little bit because I, I don't hear you well. I'm curious, um, can somebody fill me in about, I guess there's four parcels on 312 that are going to be highway commercial and uh, are able to have a four-story hotel because of the change in zoning with Crossroads. Can you that, clarify okay, that, that? That transpired when we took the vote on Crossroads. That change was made at that time. That has nothing to do with this comprehensive plan in particular. So, but it changed other lots as well yes, without it, public feedback? Because, um, I mean, the no, public we, we doesn't... Had pub we had a public hearing on it. So... Because basically, when we were at the comprehensive plan, I mean, nobody mentioned that all these plots of land were going to be changed for a hotel. So that's during, during the comprehensive plan, the Crossroads project, which was already in the stages for numerous years, that particular section of 312 was left off because of the pre-existing plans that were put forward. Okay. Then when Crossroads came in, they asked for the change to HC1 to allow basically a hotel in each zone, which I I didn't agree with, but right, it right. So the bottom line is we held a public hearing. 
and identified what they requested, and it was all done. So I'm, I'm just, I just want to understand, sorry. So basically, the when supposedly the three town board members voted it through, um, even if the public didn't want more hotels, there's always now going to be that potential because that zoning changed without that like comprehensive input from the public. I think what you're getting at, and I think I'm right on this, is that when we did the comprehensive plan, we purposely left off the crossroads, which everyone knew was right. going to be left off. However, no one anticipated that all these zones would be changed. Correct. Is that so that there wasn't proper Correct. input? Because in I, I mean, okay. when I was out talking in the public, everybody was like, oh, well, that's just going to be crossroads. Whatever happens to crossroads, nothing else is going to be affected. And now there's been this chain reaction. And I'm really curious if the public realize now our, it's changed, it hasn't changed our comprehensive plan, but it's changed the zoning in the town. So now we have this potential of having four-story buildings. I mean, it seems quite powerful of an impact on our little town. So uh, you've answered my question. That's perfect. Um, and, and Lynn, I thought when we were going through the comprehensive plan, people were not in favor of the car dealership because we had that little survey thing. Uh, yeah, um, the survey, was, to be fair about this, the survey wasn't answered by a, a vast number of people. However, right. there were more people, I think that is correct, that the small percentage of people that answered did not. I think that's correct, uh, that's accurate. Okay. Whether we can say it was a fair cross-section, I mean, I okay. might agree with you, but okay. whether we can say it was a fair okay. cross-section, okay. we really, uh, can't, but I, I understand your point on uh, having other, um, when they were discussed in the comprehensive plan and they were supposed to remain HC as comprehensive, just as is in the comprehensive plan, that, that it can be problematic now that they okay. will have something else, because that was not discussed. Okay, and, and can you answer one more question for me, Lynn? Um, so Crossroads, has that also then changed our ridge line? in this, I don't want to say master plan, but the overall planning. In the comprehensive plan, Ashley can probably answer that better than me. Not right, not as yet, but there were, there was talk of, of a permit, permitting plan for the ridge line, but. So the, the comprehensive plan recommended creating a ridge line protection permit that would be administered similar to a wetland permit. That aspect of the comprehensive plan has not been moved forward at this moment in time. Um, when the, the crossroads zoning was adopted, th there was a provision in that zoning that allowed for a modification of the ridgeline protection standards that are in the code today, but only for a special permit large retail use, um, which is only allowed in a, in a couple districts in the town. And it was so, for that specific application? It was, it was well, it, no. it was specific to the application, but well, it would be it would be applicable to any large retail establishment getting a special permit. So, any of the other HC zones now, it would any of the other do. HC zones where there is a lar a special permit for a large retail, yes, but not necessarily any HC. Just it would have to be a specific application for large. And retail. we do have another HC zone, I believe, that does have a ridge line. Is that correct? Um, Am I wrong? I might be wrong about that, but I thought at the end of 684, I'm not positive, as I said, that I'm well, right it would be the, the Highland site is definitely in the ridge line, and that's HC. All right. Um, I don't believe that, that there's any ridge lines in the Route 22 district area, which is where there's also some HC. That those are the only two HC districts in the town is Route 22 and the, the Crossroads Highlands area. Okay. There's no ridge lines in Route 22. Okay, and I, I do understand the confusion of, uh, I mean, it is confusing, I think, for a lot of people and for, for me too. So, thank you. Next public speaker, please. Um, my name is Ann Finizzi. Um I have um, the beginnings of a 
rather lengthy statement and uh, that will be uh, written. <laughs> I completely challenge the uh, legislative intent. The uh, comprehensive plan, the parameters, the original purpose was to revise a small portion of the master plan. It was not to update the comprehensive plan at all. I stood there and I stood at the planning board. It was to exclusively deal with issues arising from certain sections of the GC code that extended into Connecticut and applied to Route 6. The revision was an outgrowth of business people chafing under the limitations of that particular code. And we had vast numbers of people, business people, attending many meetings, especially the outdoor storage. There was some discussion about uh, upgrading properties, such as the motel, signs, etc. Business people attended, as I did, and as several members of this community did. There were many meetings centering on this particular location only, not as the legislative intent misrepresents. There was no indication, and I have looked to 2013, 2014 to find statements from neither this board, myself, or other members of the community that said, for example, that a common theme emerged through the visioning sessions for the comprehensive plan as the public discussed the types of uses that should be allowed in the town's commercial corridors. No such animal ever took place. And I attended most of those meetings, as did many members, several members of the community. And I, I said, well, maybe, you know, senior moments are coming upon me. But the general consensus was that it wasn't the use that mattered. Au contraire, there was one person and one person only who time after time after time at that meeting who insisted, insisted that motor vehicles be part of that code. And that was the chairman of that committee with whom we have now filed an ethics code, and we want to know what is the determination of that. He was the only one who brought it up. No one else did. As a matter of fact, when, when, it, when, it, came, when it came to discussion, we all said we didn't want it anymore. We supported, we supported the previous code and the intent of the previous code to limit motor vehicles. But that gentleman insisted over and over and over again to the point that it is now included. And I'm very disappointed in the planner because did you write this? Did you write this legislative? You wrote it. Okay, good. From the, uh, 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 let me see that it wasn't the use that mattered as much of what, as what it looked like. Well, we had what it looked like as one of the factors, no doubt about it, when we discussed the Route 6 corridor leading to Connecticut and leading to the village of Brewster because we did not want gateway, and, we, and I still consider it a gateway because it's a gateway to the village, and that we not be that there not be a glut occurring. As such, the comprehensive plan update recommended that the town seek to retain and enhance existing commercial development within the town by legalizing existing uses and so forth and so on. So that when I picked up, and again, I want to thank Michelle, when I picked up this, it was shocking to me because I saw various uh, zones and the, the uses that those various zones were permitted. 
there practically isn't one zone that will not have a hotel or motel attached to it. And under a conditional use. Now, who grants the conditional use? Not the town board. The town board only grants the special permit. The conditional use goes to the planning board. And again, I'm looking to that gentleman. So we now have the collapse of OPs to OPNUs. Now I'm gonna bet you dollars to donuts that when Mr. Lepler comes here, we're going to have another code coming in. Is it going to be OPMU? At what comprehensive meeting, at what comprehensive meeting, either on a Saturday or after Thursday or Friday, whenever it was, because I almost attended every single one of them, was OP-MU even discussed? We didn't discuss it because we were not discussing the zones for the various towns. This was supposed to be simply a master plan revision to accommodate, well, maybe justified, justified concerns from the business people of Route 6. At a town board meeting and at the planning board meeting, I stood up there and I said, absolutely, is this all that we are to look at? And it was said, yes. This, this is it because it's presenting a, a headache to the town and a headache to the business people. And I understood, you know, what, what was going on, the outdoor storage, the signage, everything at this point. Okay. I specifically stood up to confirm from the board and the comprehensive plan, and I spoke to you, Lynn, are we dealing in any way, shape, or form with crossroads? Absolutely not. We're not touching it. This is not going to be part of our um, mandate. So now what we have, what we have is an end run. The, the uh, applicant comes in and has the audacity, the impunity, to present his own code. He petitions the board to change the code. Well, we'll see about it, okay? I mean, it, it just, it just is, it, it is beyond me. Now, before we knew it, at one meeting, all of a sudden, I was presented with papers that look like this. I mean, they were multi multiple papers. And we're now going through the papers, okay? Oh, we're changing this, we don't need this, we don't, and I, and I said at one point, wait a minute, I can't keep up with you. And it was the comprehensive plan. Now, what has happened is directly contrary, contrary to the guidance that the State Department of State, and I presented it to Mr. Alvarez and I believe also to the supervisor, it's called Zoning and Comprehensive Plan. It is a guidance to town boards how to properly, now if we wanted to redo the comprehensive plan update, Fine, but that was not what was said at this, at this town board meeting. It was to be limited, it was to be exclusive, and that's why we didn't have, we had meetings, sure, a lot of them, six or seven. But if we had had an actual comprehensive meeting, look at all the things Miss Ashley Lay who is the town planner, went through just tonight. And I'm trying to absorb what she said. Now, I have the tape, and I, I am buying on my own dime every single tape that I can get out of every meeting on which the comprehensive plan was discussed. And I want to tell you, 
there better be, there better be what, what has been said here. Because I, I was there. Did I attend every meeting of, in here of the town board? No, because unfortunately there were other things going on, okay? All right, now I also got up and I made reference to the fact that we didn't have enough time, that we really needed more time. And I wrote a letter, and I have the letter, where I criticized the process of the comprehensive plan, the whole process. First of all, there was not one resident on that committee. It was all public officials or, and one member of the chamber of a board. Number two, there were times in which people didn't even attend the meetings. I attended, but I, and I counted, because I used to keep my little attendance book. You know, I'm still a teacher. Okay, I can't help. Okay? Now, the, pl the planner. Now, when we went off reservation, she should have said, look, we are now broadening up our our task, but this should have come from the town board, right? We're going away from Route 6 and whatever and so forth and so on. But now we have a ridge line that's compromised. We have a height that's compromised. We have a process that leaves a great deal to be desired because residents were not part of that process. We were not participants. We were spectators. Now. You may say, oh, well, there were about 19 or 20 people that answered the comprehensive uh, uh, planning survey. Well, these good people, fine. They're the one, it's like, it's like a vote, you know? Well, 50 people came. Well, 50 people, they're the ones that, that were either interested or anything. If you look at that comprehensive planning survey, there, there practically isn't one that says it's quite all right to have another uh, motor vehicle uh, dealership there. Quite all right. There isn't. And they say a great deal. They say a great deal. And we need to.